Hello and welcome to Digging the Coals 365. We're in Bournemouth. We're just to the west of Bournemouth. Bournemouth Pier is over there. I think, I might be wrong, I think that's my hotel. I'm, I'm, I'm in a hotel there or, or, or up there or somewhere near there tonight. All thanks to Maz. Thank you, Maz. Um, yeah, I'm doing here and then I'm going to do near Bournemouth Pier tomorrow. And I've got my big coil on. You can see it in the background there. And I'm feeling so refreshed, so good and so full of energy at the moment. Probably better than I have for the whole trip. I know you wouldn't think so looking at me, but I can't find my shaver. It's somewhere in the bottom of a bag. I'll find it tonight. Let's do this. It's very grey, but I don't care. It's warm, it's nice, it's lovely, it's Bournemouth. Day 77. The wind is starting to pick up and I've brought, I haven't brought my big camera with me. I should have done, really. Um, first signal was a coin, I think. Saw something coiny. Come on, coiny thing. No. No. Oh, it's a screw. A screw. Unbelievable. So far, so bad. <clears throat> a lot of bottle tops here. That's a nice one, though. Look at that. What drinks that off? I think it's because we've got a harvester's pub here. And I think people are coming on the beach uh, drinking bottles, because that's about the fifth I've found now on the trot. Let's try again. Is this the first coin of the day? It is. It is. One pence, we're off. Let's try a live one. What are you? What are you? Oh, not another one. Honestly, that's about ten. And they're all different ones as well. So yesterday I asked about a certain shell and I asked people to tell me what it was. Now here's another one and it's called a slip Olympic and they don't come from England, they come from far away places and they get attached to ships and they've come over here and they've become invasive. Uh, so they're really bad naughty shell limpity things, creaturey things and this one's in particular bad because I just had a signal in there and look where it is. The slipper limp, it's only gone and slippered all over it. Is it a coin? Is it a coin from a far away place? It could be, could be Spanish or could be anything. What is it? It's, it's, it's a bottle top. It's a bottle, you can have that, mate. Yeah, I'll put you back. There you go. Enjoy your bottle top. Mm. A few famous people who come from Bournemouth. You've got J.R.R. R. Tolkien or whatever he's called. Some kind of poet or writer, but very famous. I know that much. Um, Tony Blackburn, uh, a, D, a DJ, a D, disc jockey, you won't know him abroad. Who else is there? Um, Jamie Red, Redknapp, the son of Harry Redknapp, who I mentioned yesterday, who wasn't the England manager, I was getting him mixed up with Sam Allardyce. Anyway, Jamie Redknapp lives just where I was detecting yesterday with the singer Louise, and she's very nice. And someone really, really, really nice lives here. Uh, she moved here when she was 16. Amanda Holden. Amanda Holden. Amanda Holden. I do love Amanda Holden. She's in my, she's in my top four. There's a woman over there blowing massive bubbles, which are coming past me, and she's attracting quite a large crowd. Now, you know, I'm hunting for gold. Where's my crowd? I'm on my own here. Luckily, I'm not tomorrow. That's Bournemouth Pier. I'm being joined by somebody tomorrow, I believe, tomorrow morning, so I won't be alone. But you know, what's so good about blowing bubbles? I can find gold, for God's sake. This is what I'm dealing with. It's absolutely ridiculous. 19 bottle tops, one ring pull, and one coin. That's all I've had so far. Um, that's all I've dug. No other trash at all. But just to show you, look, Budweiser is still the popular one, along with San Miguel. And there's a, there's a stone there which looks like a nose. In fact, if I put a little smiley face there... Yeah, you can sort of see it, can't you? And give him some hair. There you go. 
But yeah, I was asking the question what these are from and everyone was saying bud and there's your proof, look. It's not gold though, is it? I just had a, a woman chatting me up on the beach. You know what the icebreaker was? The damn woman with the bubbles over there. Oh my God, there's one coming straight from me. <laughs> I have been trying right next to the sea's edge here, but there's absolutely nothing. Just look how clean it is. No metal, no rubbish, no seaweed, no shells, nothing. Just pure sand and my footprints. And water and the odd seagull. Whoa! Let's see how much money we've raised for rays of sunshine in the last 24 hours. Bing! And this is how much money we've raised all together. Bing! I've done it the wrong way around. I don't normally do it that way around. Never mind. Um, I think only one donation in the last 24 hours, which I, I have to be honest, I'm a bit disappointed in you guys. Um, because I did put a video on yesterday explaining the charity and what it's about and... Uh, only one donation. I think it was a hundred dollars. So, but a nice donation. So, thank you very much for that. There might be more before I post the video, but uh, please start donating again, guys. Uh, link in the description to diggingthecoast.com. We want your money. We want to make dreams come true for little children. Come on, dig deep. Right, that's me done for the beach. Um, exactly the same as yesterday. Just wasting my time digging up trash. One coin and I must have had about, in total, 35 bottle tops. That's it. But I've enjoyed it, you know, and it's a nice beach. Nice beach, nice people, nice sand, nice day. So I'm not complaining. So I'm gonna go now into the center. I might try and get into a science museum. Take you in there. So why can't they walk fast when they've got such big legs? Uh, well, they, the babies can. They All right. Fast. What they do, this walking that they do, is, is like a, is a leap in the breeze. This here is the largest butterfly in the world. There's my finger. It is pretty big, probably about five inches long, six inches wide. But I don't know if you can tell, but that is the end of it is shaped like a caterpillar. Uh, sorry, a caterpillar there and a snake there, and it's another defensive system. When it's sat on a leaf, predators would see that and think, ooh, caterpillar, possible snake, and not attack it. I didn't know this until now, but there's a tortoise here, a real one. But you can tell the age of a tortoise because it's got rings like a tree. And I think the guy was just telling me it's got like 50% DNA the same as a tree. Never knew that. This is a mummy. Okay, there's actually a mummy in there. And this is her, Tahima. And that's how they think her face is reconstructed. But this fascinates me. I've just asked the question. If you look here, it's like cloth. And basically, it would be a wooden coffin, a wooden tomb, uh, covered in cloth, then covered in plaster, then painted and then varnished and some of the painting on this is amazing it must have taken them months to do this and inside there is is Tahima and exactly how the founder apart from they've taken the shawl off she had this shawl made of tiny beads look at them beads that must have taken a long time to make yeah, daughter of a priest, and all these amazing Egyptian figurines. This is what she looks like inside the tomb. There's the shawl, look, you can see the beaded shawl. And there it is now. That fascinates me, that's 3,000 years old. <clears throat> and it's actually a book made out of palm leaves. They used to write books on palm leaves. At the back there you've got a meteorite found near here which really fascinates me because somebody invited me to the Isle of Wight and told me where he knows lots of tiny little meteorites landed and uh, said he would tell me the location if I got there but I, I couldn't make it. I didn't have the time. That's pretty cool. That is the eggshell of a dinosaur. 
How cool is that? A fragment of an eggshell of a dinosaur. Look at the design on them cake urchins because that looks like what I found on the beaches in America. Can you remember in America we found all them things? I'll have to email my friend when I get home and Laurie and find out what they were called. See the Venus flower. But we didn't call them cake urchins. There are 59 species of butterflies left in in Britain, um, the most common being the tortoise shell there. The large tortoise shell is thought to be extinct. How sad's that? Something you didn't know, there's actually a, a special relationship between ants and butterflies. Ants would take butterflies into the nest, they'd catch them, yeah? Take them into the nest and basically stroke them and when they stroke them, the butterflies give off a certain scent which calms the ants and they get on really well with them and they look after them and then they make like little cocoons and then, you know, they look after the cocoon and then a new but butterfly comes out, a caterpillar comes out, leaves the nest and then the whole thing starts again. Ants collect and get on very well with butterflies and moths. How interesting. This was the garden of tiger moths. It used to be so common. Everybody's garden had this, basically all butterflies, depending on Now these are fascinating, guys. These are not real. These were made by this guy, Charlie. Charles Souchard. He made these. And apparently he was a homosexual guy, and a really nice guy, but the guy who he was with was really nasty. And the nasty guy basically pushed this Charlie so far one day, Charlie got a meat cleaver and put it through his head, through the nasty one's head, and went to prison for murder. But he actually made these before then. And this Charlie came in one time with a collection of dragonflies and he showed it to his friend here who is a, an expert on dragonflies and butterflies and he showed him this, these, t I think there was 12 uh, dragonflies, this isn't it, showed him these 12 dragonflies and this guy here said, it's called Keith, he says it's absolutely perfection, how did you preserve them like that? And they weren't even real. They were so realistic, um, it, it uh, fooled a professional. But yeah, he went on to start, he made, he made them. But what, what a tragic story. You've got a golden eagle in here. And I was just reading on the news the other day, the last remaining golden eagle in England, the thing it has died. Um, nobody's seen it for a year. But golden eagles in Scotland, there's actually more of them now than there has been for decades. There's a lot of them in Scotland, but in England, zero. That was the Bournemouth Nature Natural Place Museum-y thingy. Science, egeologist place. Hope you enjoyed a bit of that. It was basically a man going around talking and telling me things and there were about four other people and they were just going on about butterflies and stuff and moths and Egypt it were it were it were it were interesting and there was some beaut oh the people who we was talking to there were me and four others um two beautiful beautiful people um and two others so we did that i i was fascinated but it probably won't come across in a video but i anyway i'm going to put it on see what you think and I'll see you tomorrow on Digging the Course 365, Bournemouth, near the pier. Get in. See you later. Bye-bye.